Hi, welcome back. So in this video, we are going to be talking about some different types of the git reset command because there are actually a few flags that can completely change the way this works. So a little bit of a recap. In the last video, we were looking at uh, two git commands, which are revert and reset. So we were, you know, trying to use them to fix errors or if we wanted to, you know, maybe remove something that we didn't want. And we looked at that, but there are actually many different flags that you can use with one of the commands, which is resetting. And they can completely uh, change the way that you use the command. Because right now, you probably think that git reset is only if you want to completely destroy something. But there's actually a lot of different uses for it, and we're going to go over them in this video. So there are three different types of flags, soft, mixed, and hard. And pretty much all of them kind of work in the same way in that they remove or change something, but they kind of work or remove them in different ways. So I'm going to go over a very overview-ish version without trying to get into technical details because that would make it really complicated. So when you use the soft flag, pretty much what you're doing is all you're doing is changing the actual commit. So let's say you want to move back in time one commit. Pretty much what you do is when you use git reset soft, it's going to go back one commit, but it's not actually going to remove any of the changes you've made. You're still going to have all of your staged files, so everything that's ready to be committed, all of the changes in your working directory or anything you've been working on, and everything will still be there. Pretty much if you create a new commit as as you were working on it, it's just going to undo the reset you've done. So it doesn't actually remove anything. The only thing that it's getting rid of is some commit, but it's not actually permanently removing any files. So the main purpose to you know do something like this would be to fix something or a mistake that you've made in a commit. So for example, and I know this has happened to me definitely a few times, is you're just really typing commits fast and you want to get it you know, quick and rush through, but you end up making a spelling error or a mistake in timestamp or something like that, and you don't want that. But again, why would you want to revert hard when you can just get rid of the, or, you know, make a new commit when you can just get rid of the spelling error by using this command? Because all you have to do is use git reset soft to go back one commit, and then you recommit with um, your spelling error fixed. So pretty much all you're getting rid of is the kind of name stamp that holds all of the content over something. So the next one we're going to talk about is mixed. And this is a little bit complicated um, because it's kind of in between resetting hard and resetting soft. So firstly, this is going to be the default command or the default flag, sorry, for git reset. So you don't actually have to specify it unless you really need to do so for some reason. So pretty much git, git mix or sorry, git reset mixed works in the way that it still um, keeps all of the you know changes or things you've been working on, but instead of having all of your staged files, pretty much what happens is you move back in time and now they're in your working directory. So think of it this way. Let's keep going with the example of one commit. So we want to move back in time one commit. Now we've already staged a bunch of, fi of fi files, so we use the git add command to add up all, our, all of our files and now they're staged. But pretty much when we move back in time, these changes are no longer there. They're not staged and ready to commit. So what's going on here? Pretty much instead of having it staged or inside ready to commit, all of your all of the changes that you've made are now in your working directory. So although it doesn't look like anything's changed, it actually has because it's no longer ready to commit. If you wanted to, let's say, commit it, what you'd have to do is re-add it again and then commit. So you could pretty much match this up with soft if pretty much what you did is went back in time one commit using mixed and then added all of the files to the staging area ready to be committed. This would pretty much give you the exact same effect. But instead of you know trying to get rid of a spelling error, this would be much more useful if you maybe accidentally committed a file that you don't want or maybe you've committed some errors or changes that you don't want in your repository. So. Let's take this example. Let's say we have a very large file that we don't necessarily need to commit. Maybe it's over, you know, 200 megabytes or something like that, and we accidentally commit it. So what would we do from there? Pretty much the easiest way to fix this is just use git reset mixed, go back in time one commit, and then add all of the files that you've been working on, but leave that one file that you've accidentally added out. 
That way you can recommit everything without the file. And you could use things like git revert and there are so many different methods, but this just keeps it a lot cleaner without having to create more commits that are just kind of adding on to the problem that you've created yourself. So the final one, which we've covered in the last video is hard. So this is the strongest out of the three. Now pretty much mixed removes it from the staging area. All of the changes that you've made are now in your working directory. This is kind of the final frontier of your git reset journey. But once you use git reset hard, it takes all of those changes in the working directory and completely removes them. It's as if those commits never happen. And this is going to be the most common use for a hard or sorry, a git reset is to completely get rid of some amount of commits. There's no data or no evidence left that those commits ever existed because all of the changes that you've made are not in the staging area and they're not in the working directory. So pretty much this is much more useful for when you've created some irreversible error in your program. And this has happened to me quite a few times is where, uh, you know, maybe I accidentally compiled something wrong and it just crashed everything and would not open. Now, simply going back in time and recommitting the things wouldn't really fix that. And although it would work in some cases, in mine, it did not work. It was just messing up with the memory and you could not open it no matter what. So the easiest way to do this would just to be go back in time to a working point where it was safely running and as normal instead of having to, you know, completely destroy your program because that would really destroy a lot of the work that you've been working on, especially if you have, you know, thousands and thousands of changes changing or deleting the program as a whole wouldn't really apply. So this has definitely saved me a few times and that is why git reset hard is the most commonly used. It's a really good fail safe and is actually one of the main reasons a lot of people use git in general is to kind of create a safe a fail safe so in case of maybe errors or something goes wrong there's an easy way to just move back and forward in time to fix that. All right, so that's pretty much it for you know git reset and the different flags to use with it it's a very complicated command as you move deeper uh, into kind of the technical parts of it but for now this is all you really need to know is where each one can be applied and what it can be used for all right let's move on